Hey guys, welcome to Fishing with Gary. Today I'm going to come out try to get some fish on this brush hog. They've been biting on this uh, last few days. So, just a Texas rig brush hog with a quarter ounce weight and uh, the tail dyed in chartreuse. So, appreciate you watching this channel and uh, we're going to get out there right now and head up the lake and try to catch some fish. Hey guys, we're out here at uh, Bartlett just messing around today, just kind of seeing what the bite's going on. And uh, Brian's with me, my new camera guy filming. So we're going to show you a little bit what I do. Everybody wants to know about brush hogging. So I had just cast it out here while he was getting the camera ready and they started biting because of the afternoon. So this one is deep. So I'm going to just reel this up and then I'll show you, get him back in the water a little bit. So you can see when you catch these deep ones, they're a little bit white, you know, but that's just a, a nice little fish. Just a, uh, let me see if he can go down real quick. Go on down. Oh, there he goes. So basically, for those of you who don't, don't know what I do, is I have a bobber stopper tied on here and I have a uh, one quarter ounce tungsten. And then I, I uh, just Texas rig my brush hog. The one thing that I do, at Bartlett especially here or Roosevelt is I put that stain on the back okay so we got all rigged up again I actually broke off that tungsten and things so we're ready to start fishing again so we're right where we were before and you can see in front of me that these rocks are just right there it's 26 feet deep so I want that thing to drop down I want that bait to drop all the way to the bottom because that's where the fish are. Some of them are in 25, 26, 30 feet. They're not, they're not shallow. Every once in a while I'll catch one just by flicking up to these rocks. So I'm just going to keep giving it line, giving it line, letting it go down. And nothing. So I'm not going to wait all day for it to do that. So I'm just going to pitch up up to the rocks, the face of that rock, and just let that go down again. And we'll see if we can't get another bite or two, just to show you. So I'm just gonna let it go down, 20 feet, let it go down. And just let it go down to the bottom. There's a few fish on the bottom. So we're just gonna show you how to how I use this thing, and uh, I'm just Texas rigging this. So we're just gonna get over to some of this chunk rock in here, and uh, I like to throw it, you know, close to these outside bol uh, boulders here. So let me get up a little bit more, because I'm in 40 feet of water. The fish today are are we're being caught in 20 to 35. They're pretty deep. That's why I was worried about that one. If it, go down so let me just kind of get this up and uh, Brian showing that rock right there you're, you're probably looking at it right now so that this is 35 feet of water where I'm at so I'm going to just cast up to that rock and then just let that go down and just sink going down going down okay it's on the bottom so it must have hit another rock down there so what I'm gonna do is just just work that off those rocks and just let it fall back down again you want to just keep working it real slow and it's a real slow bite you know so just work it down off the rocks and let it go down now I'm looking at a lot of fish down here in 24 feet of water so uh, so I'm going to let that just keep falling down. Just let it go down, let it go down. There it is, 23, 24. And I'm going to just give it line and let it fall even further. Just going to let that keep going down. You know, once I, I kind of just pull it a little bit, I just let it sit there because that's usually when my bite comes, is right after I just let it sit, sit there. So I didn't get a bite on that, that cast, so I'm just gonna cast it out again. 
Now, the reason I'm casting so close to shore is because it's so deep. It just falls right off. So this is a very, very steep shoreline. It's not gradual or a flat or anything. So it's still going down. I'm just going to keep feeding the line. I'm using 12 pound, 12 pound XPS fluorocarbon. Bass Pro Shops brand of fluorocarbon. And it's a good fluorocarbon, I'll tell you, it's real good. I'm using my Johnny Morris Platinum medium power fast tip, quarter ounce tungsten. And I'm just letting that go down. Hits the bottom and what I'm what I'm trying to do is let it come up over the over the rocks, okay? So let me just see if I can jiggle this off. Sometimes after I jiggle it off the rock and it comes loose, a bass will bite. Okay, that one stuck pretty good. Come on. Yeah, if you can get it to pop loose, a lot of times you can, but I probably went in between the crack and the rock there, and it, that's why it won't come out. Yeah, I think I've cooked on this one. So, yeah, it's solid. It's not going to come out. Okay, so I'm seeing, mm -hmm. I'm seeing some fish in here in 22 feet of water. And I'm just kind of jiggling it a little bit and just letting it sit. After I jig it, I just let it sit there. If I'm seeing fish on the screen. So I watch the graph. Here comes two or three. There's a bite right there. 22 feet. Yeah, I think it's a bite. I hope it's not a tree. Boy, they are sluggish, folks. They just don't want to. You do not want to. Oh, here he comes. Oh, ooh, yeah. That's a nice one. Skinny, but nice. Let me see if I can just pull that out. Holy mackerel. That's a nice fat one. Look how skinny he is. Man. I hope that's not a female. This is almost spawning time in another month. But you can see this one was caught shallow. Because look at how yellow he is. He was shallow. Man, look at that. He is skinny. All right, we're going to let him go down. All right. Right in the top of the mouth. Some people ask me, I get a lot of questions on emails and stuff, why I don't use a bigger sinker. Well, when you're using a $2.50 tungsten at a quarter ounce, the heavier you are, and then we're throwing it in a lot of crap here, a lot of, you can see the lot of junk we throw it in. So I'm just going to cast it way up there. And I'm only in 15, 16 feet of water here, folks, so I want to be a little bit deeper. Those fish just are not very shallow right now. They're just, they're, they're down deep. I'm lucky I caught that at 22 feet. The only reason I caught that one is because I could see it on the graph. You know, I watch my graph religiously all the time. And I, and I, to tell you the truth, I have a hummingbird that's older and I don't have the brand new one right now. So, um, you know, I could see the fish on it and I could see the bottom and I could see the shad. So, so we're just gonna keep on moving. So anytime you see like something on the shoreline that's sticking out, like Brian's probably showing that rock over there. Um, anytime you see something further out from the bank, that's a good thing, you know? So I don't just start casting on the bank. I actually am looking for targets to cast to. So I'm going to just cast over to that one right over there. And I don't have to get on the bank because it's not, that wasn't that steep of a drop off there. But I am looking at fish right here again at 19, 20, 21 feet, right below me. So I'm just going to stay right here. I'm not going to hit the trolling motor. Let it go down. Uh, we have an overcast day today. There's a front coming in today, so a uh, chance of rain tonight. So the barometer has fallen, so that's why these fish have started biting a little bit. Oh, here you go. 22 feet again. There's fish on the bottom right there. I'm just going to pull it right over in front of them. It seems like I have to let it sit there for a minute after I kind of make it jiggle, you know, and I'm not pulling I'm not jerking it all around. I'm just barely... Barely jiggling it. 
just like it, it's a crawdad moving on the bottom. I'm using a watermelon candy, uh, bush hog. I like watermelon candy. Green pumpkin works, watermelon works, but I like the watermelon candy because it's got the blue fleck in there. So that's a good thing. So I'm just going to let that sit right down there. There's two or three of them down there. So I'm just going to kind of let it sit there, jiggle a little bit, and let it sit there. Just tease them. So I can see three or four fish down there just, just cruising around. Like I said, sometimes you just got to let it sit there. Just kind of jiggle a little bit, give it a Gary, little Gary jig. There it is, right there. Ooh. My rod's bending over a little bit more than normal. A little bit more than those little I'm, I'm gonna. He's at 23 feet. Oh my gosh, look at this, Brian. Get that camera. Look at that, guys. That is a nice one. She must have just, she must have just came up and, and uh, came up to feed because she's really white. They don't, they don't have a lot of energy when they're cold like this with the water temperature at 50. 51 I think is what it is right now. Man, look at that baby. She's got some eggs in her too. No crawdads because the crawdads are down under the rocks, but that is one nice fish. Boy, look at that. Man, perfect. Let's let her go back down. Go down. I'm going to watch to make sure she gets down. That's a uh, too nice of a fish to lose, you know. If she didn't go down, I keep a needle in the glove box so that we can fizz her. So I'm just, I'm just, I'll show you how I rig this. I'm just gonna go in with, with the uh, brush hog. This is a baby brush hog. Just a quarter of a turn. Put it right up over on the keeper part of the hook. You know, you know one thing I like to do, let me give you a little tip about how I get a better hook set. Is I'm looking at this hook like this, and you're looking at it. If I get that a little bit twist to the left there, about three degrees, I usually seem to get a little bit better hook set. So let me hook this back up. Try to get your brush hog as straight as you can. Straight. If you're not... If you haven't uh, tried that uh, chartreuse dip it, get this at the Bass Pro Shop, um, I would recommend it. I'm telling you, it saves my life here. Trust me. So I got a back down here. That was a nice fish. That was, that was really good. Nice healthy fish. Some of those, about another month, they'll probably be spotted. This is the end of January. Just a little bit. Keep it going. All right, it's on the bottom. You don't see a ton of fish on the graph right now for some reason. In some areas you do, some areas you don't. Been where I just caught the other one. There's, there's two more fish right there. 20, 20, 21 feet. Okay, there we go. That's the odds are against me that I could do it again. Trust me. It's this, you know, playing video games with these fish on the graph is just something else. I'm gonna drop it down there, 24 feet. Once you find that comfort zone where the fish are, it seems like in the morning, folks, they're, they're deeper. Like, you know, 28, 30, 32. But in the afternoon, they kind of start swimming up. And we don't have no sun, so they didn't come up real close to the bank today. Okay, let's just... Let's just move along. There's, there's a couple down there. They're right on the bottom. Kind of go 
nice and slow. Wriggle it, jiggle it, let it just kind of lay there. Pull it along real slow. If you let it just lay there, when they pick it up, you can fill them with that tungsten in this, this line. Of course, this rod is very sensitive. They just, uh, just are on that bottom. Move out a little bit more. I haven't been catching any in the backs of these little cuts like this. They've all been on the outside. All right, let's try another one, another cast. Here we go. Move out and see if we can find some more fish in that desired depth, that uh, 21, 22, 23. Hey, uh, we had a couple bites real early, and then after that, my gosh, it just kind of fizzled out. My little special little worm, I always catch my fish on. Peace. 